Hey folks, my name is Jürgen, aka Nerd and Proud of It, and Destiny has brought you to my channel today to talk about the sorcery TCG that currently is on Kickstarter. But before we do that, I quickly want to tell you to not get seasick. Uh, a little look behind the scenes here. Uh, that's my setup, and yes, I definitely need a new Magic the Gathering playmat, because I only got non-Magic Magic the Gathering playmats. But um, I didn't want to dive directly into the Sorcery Kickstarter here, and wanted to give you a little glimpse uh, how I record this normally. So, uh, yeah, normally the channel is about uh, Magic the Gathering, and as you know, I really like uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, not only other TCGs, but board games, video games, that's the industry I'm working in, uh, and comics, and films, and whatever, but the channel normally is mostly about trading card games, and specifically Magic the Gathering. But I want to talk to you about the sorcery trading card game today which is currently on kickstarter so as we all know kickstarter trading card games are a big thing now flesh and blood was on kickstarter i play that as well and i kind of like it i don't think it's as good as magic the gathering personally but it's a fun distraction once in a while and it's something different i also know metazoo has been uh, on kickstarter i'm not very much into pokemon or um MetaZoo or these kind of games. I did the organized play for Yu-Gi-Oh! I did some Pokemon stuff. Of course I did Pokemon games uh, I've, I've, uh, at, at Nintendo, so I'm, I'm familiar with it. But um, yeah, when I play, I, I want to play a little more grown-up stuff. And look at this here. I scroll through a bit. Um, this definitely is more grown-up stuff. The artwork is based on the uh, 80s, 90s fantasy artwork. You got like um, different uh, different uh, packaging. Uh, these are the like starter decks, uh, pre-constructed decks. They come in a box of four. Looks pretty cool. Then you got like the uh, booster boxes. Um, you got uh, promo cards uh, and uh, you got playmats, two-player playmats. And uh, I think that's about it when it comes to the product range. The idea behind this, this is coming from New Zealand as well, same as um, the uh, Flesh and Blood trading card game. The idea behind this is that it's a little bit more grown up, like I said before. So the artwork uh, contains nudity, uh, it contains that uh, 70, 80, 90 uh, fantasy feel. Frank Frasetta uh, was mentioned. I don't see him here on the, I have to have a look later. Uh, I don't see him here mentioned on the Kickstarter page a lot, but I know he is used as like um, something that draws attention or someone in that case that draws attention. I really love his art. Always wanted to have an original piece of art, but it's out of reach uh, from, from Frank, uh, but it's out of reach at the moment. But let's have a look at what they offer here. And you've seen like the booster box and the starter set. And then you got like um, for 2,500 euros, you can get a piece of artwork uh, with with uh, two uh, cases. Then you got the, um, I think uh, if you would be a shop or a, a, a retailer, the very interesting one because you get four of everything. And if you calculate calculate like four cases, which is uh, 750 each is, each is 3000 already. And then uh, yeah, you definitely get a good price, but you have to make some, um, some uh, profit on it, of course. Um, this is not for us normal people to order. I, I might be able uh, to uh, ask a shop uh, to, or let's call it retailer, I normally call it shop, uh, a trading card game or fantasy shop to, to uh, buy one, but um, yeah, I, I don't think I will. Um, and officially, of course, they're not allowed to, but if you got some connections, then that might work out. The Avatar of the Realm, 10,000 bucks, you might say, yeah, but that contains like an original piece of artwork. What I understood is they like have 400 different cards or something, and they commissioned um, oil paintings before that. So it's very artwork driven. Uh, shipping and fees would always irritates me recently is that the VAT is not included for Europe. Uh, that has uh, 
bitten me in the neck. Is that something I could say? That has uh, had a negative effect on my Kickstarters recently a lot because I always had to play like 21 uh, percent of uh, VAT in the Netherlands. Um, it's a bit different in every country. I think in Germany it's like 19 percent, and in the Netherlands it's 21 percent. Um, so uh, yeah, if I if I buy for a thousand bucks, then uh, yeah, it's uh, two hundred ten bucks extra, and that's a bit of a surprise always. Uh, it hasn't been the case uh, in the early days, but recently it has. A lot of lot of uh, yeah, um, board games have that as well. But let's have a look at this. I think uh, there is some interesting, um, some in interesting. Uh, Stretch goals. Uh, the stretch goal of uh, plastic wrap Randic with holographic, holographic security sticker, I think, is bullshit because you should do that. <laughs> that as a as a stretch goal is a bit strange, but all the other cards and uh, adding foil cards and double sided foil cards, you can you can have a look at this. So they are addressing this very professionally. The artwork, of course, looks fantastic. What it should, uh, because uh, that's uh, their main selling point, in my opinion. I think this looks very interesting. Uh, the the uh, pledge tiers are very um, easy to distinguish. I mean, you either buy like uh, the four pre-constructed decks for about 50 bucks, you buy a booster box for about 130 bucks, or you buy a case uh, for 750 bucks. And the early bird pledgers, they got like a pre, uh, pre-production pre sample uh, booster as an extra, which I think is a bit uh, a bummer as well, because I would like to have that. And I, I if I back this, I'm still like, uh, maybe not early bird, because I didn't back on the first day, because I didn't see it. But um, yeah, I think you could give all these people, these uh, two, three thousand people, like an extra little uh, promo pack that contains pre-production samples. Uh, I hate it if Kickstarter, which already is exclusive and provides exclusive stuff, has exclusive stuff, exclusive stuff in itself as well. That's not something I like personally. Um, so yeah, sorry, but I, I, I know, yeah, but I backed it first. Yeah, but still, I'm one of the guys who uh, gives you my money to uh, produce this uh, product. So uh, I consider myself as a first backer as well. And if I don't back like within the first uh, 48 hours, I, I don't get that pack. I always think that's shitty. Uh, same as like early bird uh, extra stuff that's not available in the Kickstarter later. I don't know. To be honest, if you can choose one of those packs for extra money, then it would be okay in like the pledge manager. But I don't think you can because everything is made to order. That means even if you pledge for one booster box, you can change it to like a case later, which is very interesting. But in general, uh, I would really like to know what you guys think about this kind of stuff. Uh, there is a lot of trading card games coming out recently. And I am very curious, are you are you backing this? Uh, is that interesting to you? Are you sticking with Magic the Gathering? Are you saying like, yeah, I, I bought some flesh and blood stuff recently and that's enough for me. I saw how the price dropped. Interesting about this as well is that they probably only have like one release every year. Uh, and that for me makes it actually uh, more interesting because I have wallet fatigue when it comes to all the releases and if I would have to cover different TCGs then I probably would uh, would hate it if this uh, has releases every three months uh, and then, then I'm out because I already am a bit into flesh and blood besides magic as well and uh, yeah I, uh, you don't, I haven't logged in here but you don't want to see what uh, kind of board games I backed if you do want to see let me know I may have a poll in the future maybe you want to see more stuff besides Magic the Gathering like board games uh, video games uh, or whatever or like uh, other collectibles but um, let's focus on trading card games first because that's the community we built uh, to start with I would say uh, let me know, please, uh, what you what you think about this. I wasn't planning on releasing a video today um, on on Sunday, but uh, I'm very curious. I saw this last night. I will have a look if I back this or yeah. When I back this, I'm probably gonna back this for a case, and then I'm probably gonna add uh, one loose booster box if that's possible, and I probably will add two of the. Um, 
starter deck sets uh, and then I'm at around a thousand bucks and I rather spent a thousand bucks on magic so I'm still thinking about it uh, but uh, I want to open like one booster box if I do it because then I do it right uh, and open one set of starter decks and actually play it and that's a thing uh, which is uh, a bit uh, concerning to me as well I see uh, people saying like yeah I played it it's very nice but no videos at all about the game. Obviously, it hasn't been produced yet, but, uh, yet, but there should be like some play testing somewhere. And if uh, you can read the rules, probably I haven't, I haven't checked, but I have to check later if you can read the rules. But in general, I'm always a bit concerned when you don't see anything about um, about the game mechanics itself. Um, you see the two-player play mat, and you see like it's 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 uh, area control or something like uh, yeah, you got the. Um, card spaces and then you have to uh, like uh, I think uh, conquer stuff or whatever I, I don't know I'm not quite sure I, I'm really not sure how it works so if that's completely wrong uh, don't quote me on it uh, but uh, I would like to see more about the game because uh, yeah if the game is good then uh, the product probably uh, will have a higher chance to succeed and if the game isn't good and it's just the artwork and the product for me is uh, is in general not because on on small cards the artwork isn't that relevant uh, and I know it's part of the game and Magic the Gathering the artwork is very very important to me and I really love uh, the fact that there is so much different artwork but here um, if that's the only uh, selling point or the biggest selling point and the game comes second, then I'm starting to doubt a bit as well. Generally, don't get me wrong, I'm positive about this. Uh, I'm think I think it's interesting. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity because you have seen what happened to all the other uh, Kickstarter boxes that uh, have been produced for TCGs recently. Everything uh, has uh, gone up in price immensely. And I'm not doing this as an investment, but... I would if I if I spent like a thousand bucks or uh, for a case and um, some other stuff, then I wouldn't like to lose money right away. Like uh, yeah, then uh, once I bought it, it's worth like two hundred bucks. Uh, that I don't like that. It has to retain for me personally some value at least. A very big point with TCGs. I don't think everything should be free, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, <laughs> that's it for today. Um, I would say to finish up this video, uh, if you got any loose magic, the gathering playmates, send them my way. I only got like a uh, flesh and blood. Uh, the thing you saw, that's not even the playmat. It's more like a mouse mat of uh, conqueror's plate. The video game got that from a friend of mine. Uh, really handy because it's so broad for the for the desk. And I got some World of Warcraft playmats and some Versus System playmats from like uh, 2005, 2006. Uh, but uh, no, just kidding. I'm uh, I'm gonna round this up. Um, I wish you a very nice Sunday or whatever day you are watching this. I wish you a very nice rest of the day. And I talk to you next time, folks. Let me know if you are backing this or not. I'm very interested. Uh, thanks, folks. Bye. Bye.